The Hughes 086 Cayuse helicopter was the go-to vehicle for American forces in the Vietnam War. However, it continuously proved its worth going back to the first time it took to the skies in 1963. The small helicopter with a unique teardrop shape was fast, versatile, and more than capable of exploiting its full potential in the tricky Vietnamese countryside. And despite its vulnerability, the Cayuse was always at the center of every battle, marking targets for the powerful Cobras as part of numerous hunting parties. Killer Eggs, The Quiet One, or The Little Bird, as it was nicknamed according to its role, could be used for medical evacuations, search and rescue operations, attack rolls, or reconnaissance and insertion of military personnel behind enemy lines, eventually becoming the preferred helicopter of the American Special Forces operators and the elite 160th Night Stalkers Regiment of the U.S. Army. However, the OH-6s would become more famous for their attack mode, which involved plenty of M60 or minigun fire and color grenades, but above all, a significant level of dexterity to approach their targets as close as possible and get away with it. A unique maneuver that only the legendary Cayuse could pull off. Technical Specification 153 During the last years of World War II, the American and German militaries began experimenting with rotary wing vehicles to develop a helicopter that could take off vertically. However, only the U.S. Army succeeded at mass-producing one. The Sikorsky R-4 saw action in Southeast Asia between 1944 and 1945 and was used for reconnaissance, infiltration, and extraction operations behind enemy lines. When the global conflict ended, more rotary wing aircraft were introduced to the military and civilian markets, and the Korean War was the first large-scale conflict in which helicopters were employed on a large scale by the U.S. military. During the three-year conflict, the U.S. Army learned and perfected the use of helicopters to quickly deploy men and supplies to the battlefield. The Army also noticed the outstanding versatility of the helicopter for search and rescue operations to extract wounded soldiers and marines from rough terrain where no other vehicles had access. This led to the Army's Technical Specification 153, establishing the Light Observation Helicopter Project, or LOH. The focus of the 1950 program was to develop a multi-purpose helicopter that could be used for observation, casualty evacuation, personal transport, escort, and attack roles. Over a dozen companies submitted designs, and one of them was Hughes Tool Company Aircraft Division, from renowned aviation pioneer Howard Hughes. The company submitted the Hughes Model 369, and it was pitched against designs from Bell and Fairchild Hiller. Ultimately, the Army funded the three companies to develop the prototypes. The Hughes Model 369 was subsequently designated OH-6A, and the first prototype was delivered in 1961. Hughes OH-6 The Hughes OH-6 had several innovations that significantly differentiated it from the competition, including a fully articulated rotor with four blades of constant cord that comprised an extruded light alloy spar and a single sheet of lightweight alloy bonded to the blade. The fuselage was also unique. It was small and compact and had space for two, with additional room for cargo behind the pilot seat. Also, it was made of a light alloy and featured a semi-monocoque structure that was robust enough to protect the crew even during hard landings. The aircraft was powered by a 252 horsepower Allison T63A5A engine and flew for the first time on February 27, 1963. It quickly proved to be an excellent asset for the program, but even though it was small, light, and sturdy, the prototype lacked versatility. As the evaluations continued, the Army ditched the prototypes from the other companies and awarded the contract to Hughes in May of 1965 to produce 714 units. Despite the helicopter's success, the victory was not without controversy. The Army chose Hughes's helicopter because it was more cost-effective than its competitor, coming up at just $19,860 per airframe, while Hiller's design was at $29,415. However, it was soon disclosed 
that Hughes had voluntarily undervalued his prototype to win the bid. Although his company would absorb the cash difference during the first production batches, Hughes believed that the Army's commitment to the helicopter would be profitable in the long run. As the war in Vietnam escalated and the Army and Marines deployed more troops in early 1966, the production ceiling was increased to 1,300 units. Howard Hughes would later tell aerospace pioneer Jack Reel that he lost over $100 million producing the OH-6 helicopter. Design and Capabilities Despite the contradictions surrounding the bid for the LOH program, Howard Hughes' helicopter was introduced to the Army as the OH-6 Cayuse. Still, it was quickly nicknamed the Loach, in reference to the LOH or LOW program. Following the success of the first prototypes, Hughes' company and the Army soon began trials, and the vehicle achieved 23 world records between March and April of 1966. On March 26th, pilot Jack Schweibold achieved a close circuit record aboard a Loach after flying over 1,740 miles without landing. Then, on April 6th, Robert Ferry set the long-distance record after he flew 2,214 miles from Culver City, California to Ormond Beach in Florida. The flight took 15 hours. The Cayuse was generally armed with a 7.62mm M60 machine gun or a 40mm XM75 grenade launcher. An M134 minigun or an M2 Browning machine gun could also be fitted in a dedicated pod. The teardrop-shaped helicopter could also carry seven Hydra 70 rockets, two tow anti-tank guided missiles, and two AGM-114 Hellfire missiles in other pods. The Loach had space for up to four men, and it was operated by two crewmen located in the forward cockpit. At the same time, two removable seats could be placed in the cabin to carry Special Forces operators, or a VIP. The engine was placed over the fuselage and was coupled to a four-bladed rotor assembly and a shaft that ran through the tail stern to the two-bladed rotor near the port side. The engine exhausted through a circular port located under the tail, and to keep it light and sturdy, the Loach featured a fixed twin-skid landing gear supported by two points. Cockpit and passenger doors were optional, and pilots often removed them for increased situational awareness when conducting operations behind enemy lines. Attack Operations in Vietnam The Loaches arrived in Vietnam in mid-1966 and were primarily used for search and rescue, medical evacuation, or close air support roles. For attack operations, Loaches generally worked on hunter-killer parties with Army Cobra helicopters. The OH-6s would venture forward into enemy territory, hover as close as possible to the canopy of the dense Vietnamese jungles, spot enemy combatants, pop a grenade to target hostile positions, and get back to formation before the Cobras approached to obliterate the area with their superior firepower. Doing so was extremely dangerous, as the Loaches were prone to damage by AK-47 rifles, RPK machine guns, and even submachine gun fire, depending on the range. However, given their speed, size, and maneuverability, they were better suited for this role than Hueys or Cobras. More often than not, playing as the decoy to lure out enemies paid off once the Cobras decimated the enemy. Still, the cost to pay was high. From the more than 1,300 OH-6s produced and sent to Vietnam, more than 700 were destroyed by North Vietnamese ground fire. Extending its reach. Besides its attack role, the Loach was also used as a reconnaissance platform. Pilots would often carry an officer in charge of an operation over a village or a region where the enemy was awaiting them to analyze hostile territory before a planned attack. For this purpose, the Army and the CIA experimented with several OH-6s to minimize their noise level and evaluate a harmonic control system to reduce helicopter vibration. This noise reduction program earned the OH-6 a second nickname by CIA and Special Forces operators in Vietnam. They dubbed it the Quiet One. These modified OH-6s were used to insert and extract CIA personnel, Green Berets, or MACB SOG operators that were left behind enemy lines for covert operations. The small size of the OH-6 
made it the ideal vehicle to drop men in areas where no other aircraft had space to maneuver. Jungle clearances, hills covered by a dense canopy, and other locations were no obstacle for the quiet one. The Loach also excelled at medical evacuation, or medevac, becoming a crucial asset to extract critically wounded men that could be treated in the cabin before it was too late. The Little Bird In 1968, the Army sought to increase its arsenal of light helicopters and called for a competition that paved the way for Bell's OH-58 Kiowa. The introduction of this helicopter would halt the OH-6's production, limiting it to 1,434 units. Still, they continued to fight throughout the war. At the end of the Vietnam War in 1975, Hughes Company kept selling the civilian version of the OH-6, which was called the Hughes 500. It was sold to numerous countries, including Japan, which also began producing it in the 1980s. After the failure of Operation Eagle Claw in 1980, the Army introduced the Little Bird variant of the OH-6. This version came from a lack of a dedicated air vehicle that could be used for covert operations. The Little Bird was specially designed to be as quiet as possible, following the experimentation carried out by the Army and CIA during the Vietnam War. Powered by a T-63A5A or a T-63A700 engine rated at 650 horsepower, the Little Bird was fast and quiet, making it highly reliable for special forces. Armed with a minigun, a chain gun, and a GAU-19 Gatling machine gun, the Little Bird is also a powerhouse of its own. With the inclusion of anti-tank missiles and other explosive ordnance, the Little Bird became the primary helicopter of the 160th Special Operations Regiment, or the Night Stalkers. Going back to 1986, the Little Bird has been the go-to helicopter of choice by the American Special Forces and saw action for the first time during the 1983 invasion of Grenada, going on to serve during the battles of Mogadishu, Somalia, and several conflicts in the 1990s and the early 2000s. Bell's Little Bird is a clear example of an aircraft that has stood the test of time, going strong for over six decades with minimal upgrades, and continuing to be the ideal fixed-wing aircraft for several different missions because of its versatility and impressive weapon configurations. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, and let us know what you think of the performance of the OH-6 Cayuse during the Vietnam War and its revamped version currently employed by the U.S. Special Forces. Stay tuned.